of this of this webinar so thank you again for joining for joining us for this open air webinar um, we are starting uh, a series of of open air webinars uh, focused on the, on the open air services so in the coming months we will organize uh, another webinar so please stay tuned on our communication channels. We will promote uh, another webinars targeting other, other services, other uh, stakeholders. Just uh, a brief introduction and uh, housekeeping roles. So the webinar will be recorded. Participants' microphones are off as, at the beginning, but if you want, you can open your microphone during the, the, the questions uh, to put your directly your questions to the to the speakers. Um, if you want to participate, uh, you can use the chat to introduce yourself to, to interact with participants and write questions to the speakers, or you, you can use uh, the question uh, the Q and A document that we will provide in the chat is a Google Doc in which uh, you can add your, your um, questions. Um, and after the presentations, we will address all, all the questions. And you can also raise your hand to, to speak. Presentations and recording will be shared uh, with you by email and also in the webinar uh, event page after the, the presentation. Um, if you want to, to share um, in your social media channels uh, this event, you can also do, do it using, for example, the, the hashtag of OpenAir or refreshing the, the OpenAir account of Twitter. Uh, making just a brief overview of uh, OpenAir services and, uh, and, and a brief context. So open air since the last 10 years, more or less, um, is the, the developing a set of services targeting uh, different stakeholders, mainly, mainly to uh, support the adoption of uh, open science uh, good practices. And um, since the beginning of this year, open air started a new project, the open air Nexus uh, project, um, that is a, a H2020 project that onboards uh, to the AWOSC 14 services to implement and uh, accelerate open science. We can, we can see on this slide um, these, these uh, 14 services. And uh, these services are provided by a public institutions, infrastructures and companies being structured or grouped in free portfolios, uh, as we can see here, the publish, monitor, and discover portfolios. These services are widely used in Europe and beyond and integrated in Open Air Nexus to uh, assemble a uniform open science scholarly communication package for the, the OSC. Uh, here we can al uh, al also see the Open Air Connect service, that is the service uh, we will talk um, today. And for this, we have uh, two speakers, Alessia Bardi from CNR, who is also uh, the service manager of Op uh, Open Air Connect. And today uh, we'll present us the service in detail. And we uh, also have uh, Diane von Gunten from CRIM um, that will present us a use case of an air maps project uh, that uh, are using uh, the Open Air Connect service to create a scientific gateway to collect uh, research outcomes in the energy research domain. So I think we can start uh, the presentation, uh, starting with Alessia to, to tell us about the Open Air Connect service. So Alessia, the floor is yours. You can, I, mean, I close my Yes, thank you, Andre. 
Let me stop my sharing. Okay. Okay, so you should now be able to see my screen. Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, perfect. Okay, so first of all, th thanks for being here to, to this webinar. And thank you also, Andre, for the introduction, because this makes my first slide useless <laughs> because you already uh, presented the services that are um, offered by open air for, for open science. Uh, so we will focus today on the connect services for the research communities and its uh, relationship with the open air research graph. So uh, first of all, open air connect delivers on demand open research gateways for research communities. And the goal is to lower the barriers that hinder the adoption of open science practices in the research communities. In particular, uh, there is the problem of the literature and data deluge, and the fact that research products are scattered across different repositories and sources. So there is not um, an easy to find entry point to all the outputs of, of our research communities. Uh, there is a lack of community awareness in the sense that in some cases, community lacks awareness about themselves. In other cases, there is lack of awareness about the open science practices that they should, uh, that they should follow. Finally, uh, another barrier that exists is the lack of open science services and tools. And regarding these, um, well, some communities are more mature, for example, um, research communities which are backed up by uh, a research e infrastructure, um, but some other communities are not as, um, are not mature in this sense. So that they really like, they really lack the tools. So, the goal is to support those communities, those that are not mature enough, so that open air can help them shift uh, towards an effective implementation of open science publishing practices in their domain. So to do this, the Gateway offers a community view of the open air research graph. And we will see uh, in the next slide what the open air research graph is. Um, but it's not only about uh, discovery portal. It's more than this. And you can see um, Connect as an open science toolkit. So an entry point to different tools for the implementation of open science practices. So the open air research graph. So uh, the open air research graph can be described as a um, big collection of metadata records describing entities of the research life cycle. So we have publications, data sets, software, other types of research products like methods, uh, protocols, um, compound objects, research objects, uh, and all different outputs that researchers produce during their research activities. And these are linked to uh, other entities, which can be, for example, the funding project, uh, the organization, the author with their ORCID identifiers and the funders and so and also link between each other. So for example, we have links between publications and the data sets they are supplemented by. The graph also includes information about the access right so that you can see which versions are uh, open access, for example. And we also have information about the research communities and the research infrastructures, thanks to which these products have been produced. And the graph is built by um, aggregating metadata records from many different sources from all over the world. So um, we include Crossref, Datasite, ORCID. Uh, we have software from Software Heritage and also GitHub. Uh, but we have, let's say, the, the very famous 
players in scholarly communication, so preprints from archive, uh, we have Zenodo, we have Cielo, uh, PubMed Plus, and many others um, open access journals. Regarding the funders, we have the projects from the European Commission, the FP7 um, program and the H2020, and soon we are going to introduce also the Horizon Europe, but we have also other European, national and international funders. And so in, in the end, thanks to this aggregation, we have a graph with more than 150 150,000 publications. And clearly it's hard for a community to find what's relevant. So this is why with Connect, we are offering this community view. So the slice of the graph that is relevant for the community. And this slide shows how the, grief, the, how the graph is created. And I'm not going into the details of each phase, but just to you know, explain the, the challenges that we are dealing with, uh, I can see that we collect the metadata, we harmonize them according to an internal data model. Uh, we identify the duplicates and we merge them together because uh, we may collect different metadata records about the same uh, entity from different sources. So we identify them as duplicates and we merge them together so that we count, we count it only once when we produce statistics. After this, we, ha we have a step of enrichment. Uh, so we enrich the graph with additional properties and links that we can infer from the metadata and from the full text of open access publications. And for example, we infer links to projects, links to data sets, software. Um, we enrich the metadata with additional subject classification. And of course, we identify if a product is related to a community or to a research infrastructure. Finally, we have a final step of cleansing, and then we make the graph available to our portals um, so we index it on a solar index that powers our portal and our API, but we also calculate statistics. Uh, we calculate statistics and we produce numbers and charts that are made available on our monitor portal uh, for funders and um, research infrastructures and organizations, and also on the Open Science Observatory. And the graph is delivered as an open resource and basically it, it will be the uh, resource catalog for the EOSC, the European Open Science Cloud. And the graph is made available via our API, but also via um, dumps, which we published on Zenodo. And API and dumps can be used by others to build on top of, of this content. Here you can see some of the uh, of the clients, let's say that, that we have. So we uh, we have services of thematic research infrastructures, but we also have uh, Sigma, which is the system from uh, the system for grant management uh, of the European Commission, which is using our API to suggest publications linked to the projects. Uh, but we also have um, Scopus uh, using uh, our APIs to get the links between publications and data sets. So let's go back to the Open Air Connect. So as I said at the beginning, you can see it as an open science toolkit for the research communities. Um, and to start with, um, researchers get a discovery gateway uh, where they can explore, navigate, search all research products and entities of the research life cycle that are relevant for their community. And um, the portal is also customizable to their needs. And you will see an example of these uh, with the presentation that Diane uh, 
will will do after after mine. Uh, so how do we do it? Community managers are uh, experts uh, of the community, and they have access to admin to an administration dashboard. And basically, through this dashboard, they can configure the criteria of inclusions of research products in their gateway. So OpenAir applies the configuration on the OpenAir research graph. And this is used to identify the products of the communities so that those are made available via the, via the web portal of the gateway, via our OpenAir API. And they are also published as JSON dumps on Zenodo so that um, the content is reusable also by, uh, by others. And for example, the community may decide to develop their own um, domain specific portal, for example, or their own specific statistics. So the configuration criteria are fundamental are very important and they are in the hands of the community managers who are the experts in the domain. And specifically with the, uh, with the dashboard, they can specify these different criteria of inclusion. So they, they can provide a list of keywords, uh, project grants, thematic repositories, uh, thematic um, journals, the Zenodo communities, uh, and also organizations which are known to be working in the field. Also, the simple users can contribute to grow the record of the research outputs of the community. And they can do it using the link functionality, which is available uh, in the gateway and on the open air portal, so that researchers can basically add products to the gateway if they are not uh, already included, but also add links between them. So uh, they can add links to projects, links between publications and data sets, links to software, um, and so on. Finally, we have uh, the open air algorithms. So we have uh, the so-called propagation algorithm, which basically propagates the fact that a product is relevant for a community from one product to another. So for example, if we know that a publication is relevant because it was collected from a thematic journal and this publication is supplemented by a data set, then also the data set is added to the gateway, even if the data set didn't, um, uh, didn't come with any metadata information about the community. Then we have the full text mining algorithms. So while the propagation algorithm only works on the metadata, the full text goes into the abstract and to the whole full text of the open access publication. And here we mine for new information that is not explicitly available in the metadata. And they include links to projects, affiliations, uh, document classification, relevant research infrastructures, related data, and much more. And this is all information that we can exploit to identify products of the community. Then we have the tools to bridge the places where research is done, the research infrastructure, and the places where research is published, which is the scholarly communication ecosystem. And for this, uh, there are the Zenodo API that can be used by the services of the community to publish any type of research products and make them available via the gateway uh, straight away. In addition, we can also provide up-to-date information to repositories of the community or other services of the community, thanks to the open air content provider dashboard, uh, which is uh, one of the other services that OpenAir offers, which target um, content providers and repository managers. Finally, statistics and tracking. So in the gateway, you will find tools that ease the reporting, for example, to funders, 
um, that uh, gives information about the open science uptake in the community. And then the community, the community managers can decide to use this information, for example, to shape new policies on open science for the community. Uh, we provide some default indicators, uh, but those indicators are configurable. So if the community has specific needs or specific indicators to, to check, uh, this can be done on request. So to conclude, Open Air Connect delivers configurable open research gateways for research communities that lower the barriers um, that hinder the adoption of open science practices. It is the service by which Open Air supports community building, strengthening and empowering. And as you can see in this slide, we have already delivered 10 community gateways to a community of different disciplines and we are working with, uh, with some more. So and, and we range from energy research, as you will see, but also transport research, digital humanities. Um, then we have, for example, agricultural and food science. We have a gateway for COVID and we are working also um, with the galaxy workflows. And, uh, and this is a, let's say a work in progress with the science and technology innovation policies as well. So if you are interested uh, in, into these and you want to know more, you can go to um, connect.openair.eu. You will get the full list of the gateways that are already available. And you will also find a contact form that you can use to contact me. And, uh, and then we can start a conversation to understand which are your your needs and how, uh, how open air can help you. So this ends my presentation. I don't know, uh, Andre, shall we give the floor to Diana? Yes, thank you, Alessia. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, after the presentation, so we can address the, the questions from Perfect. the participants. So now we can start. The, the presentation of Dian. Dian, you, the floor is yours. Yes, I will Thank start. Do you. Um, you see my screen? I hope so. Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. Do you still see my screen when it's in presentation mode? Yes, it's, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, perfect. So, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to my short presentation. The goal of this, of this presentation is to show you an application of what you talk Alessia about. So what we can actually uh, do with, with this gateway uh, for a particular community, so in this case, uh, energy research. Um, this uh, gateway was actually part of a, of a larger project, an H2020 project that we call NMAPS. It has the goal of improving data management and accessibility in the field of energy research. Uh, so mostly the goal was that in, in, to get better data management, to improve our fair practices, in energy research. It's um, a two year project with a 1 million uh, about front uh, budget. And you can, if you want to know more about this project, uh, you can clearly uh, go uh, to our website. So, um, so the, let's say the general goal is, is to identify interesting database in energy research to actually see that they fail and that we can actually reuse it and use it uh, long term for the energy community. So what about the, the current situation in energy? One thing in energy is that we have quite a lot of data. I mean, especially this last year, we, we start to have a lot of data, for example, electricity, electricity cost, consumption, also heat. So all heat consumption, there is still less data, but we still have, let's say, um, an improvement on the sheer amount of data. However, we they usually separated into different databases, they're not easy to find, and the quality is uh, also to be discussed. So there is sometimes um, high quality data set and sometimes less high quality data set, and we don't really uh, know where to find the right data. So scientific data is stored, but it's not easy to find, which among the facts and nobody will use it. Uh, it's also, we don't have too many visualization and analysis tools. 
So for the moment, we, we have different tools, but we don't really like have a generic tools and we can use, uh, let's say, to visualize data. And in general, um, I would say that's a notion of open science and FAIR is improving into the research community, um, into the energy research community, but it's still quite low. And of course, we would like to improve that. Um, more generally, when we look really at open science, the challenges we have would be often that the project are quite short. So the two or three years and after we stop, so nobody really have incentive to keep the data long term, to keep it available. Often it's unclear which type of license is linked to the data, so we're not really sure if we can reuse it. It's not also clear how the data was created before, so we don't really know if it was created of measure. Um, the access of, of software, also you have the same problem, you don't really know exactly how it was, was created. And there is difference between countries or data providers, so we also have a problem of, let's say, unification or at least coherence between the different data sets. In particular, with in the energy field, I think one particular issue, because what I said before could, I think, be you know quite true in, in a lot of different fields, um, there is a strong difference between the user need. Um, energy is quite political generally, so we have high data needs for non-technical actors, uh, which are important. They, they really need precise data, quantitative data, um, but also they want to, you know, to access it easily. And, and so where we see this is a strong difference between the user need. We thought, OK, it would be too difficult in the NMR project in general um, to, to create just one entry point, to have you know, one tool which can you know, answer to the need of all our, our, our users. That wouldn't be possible. Uh, we also think that the two tools we have created might not be sufficient, but our idea there was to have this, uh, to create already two tools, which let's say would provide the best uh, support for the maximum amount of user. So we had created uh, two layer tools, so we talked about these two layers, where one is, is, is this gateway where we really have the chance of using the open air research graph to have exhaustivity. So that means we can really find as much paper, as much data as we want. We can always go search for a particular data set. We can look for link between publication and data set. So we really have an access to uh, many things, let's say. Um, and in the same time, we thought, OK, what we need also is to have a layer on top, which would be more of a curated data set selection. So we decided to select 50 data set, which we thought are very important, that they're critical, and that there we would do a visualization tool. So we already have part of it. Um, to really help to visualize these data sets and we know uh, our quality control, so we know they're quite high quality and um, that we know are really important for most of the actors to understand, uh, let's say, the, the field of energy quickly. And that in case if somebody needs something more precise or a particular data set, it can go back and, and go to this gateway and having access to many things. And to make really a link, our idea was to make the link between a visualization tool with less data sets, but more control data sets, and um, the, the research community uh, gateway, which will be may say larger, but maybe harder to exactly find what you want, but which will be access to everything. And you can also um, go from one site to another, let's say, go from one view to another and switch between these two tools. That was, let's say, the, the ID of, of an air maps. And, um, and here, how we, let's say, use the gateway in, in practice with these two layers. So yeah, that's, a, that's our idea of the concept of the project is, is to get a two and three point system uh, for data management for our user. So with this two and three point, it's function as a current system, but it's, it's allow uh, different user to access the data uh, in the way which is more practical for them. Okay, so, so the first layer, as I said, is, this, is a community gateway. We check exactly what uh, Alessia showed you before. And this would be how the gateway looked generally, with here so a way to share the different title, author, etc. And here, uh, here what we had in the NMAX um, project, so, so we actually modify the gateway for, for our purposes, for, so that it's adapted to the need of our community. We actually here add um, this, a different feature data set, critical data sets than we wanted to show in the visualization tool so that there is a link between the visualization tool and the gateway. So this new tab is, is added there. That was what was uh, new in, in NMAPS, let's say, to, uh, to be able to 
have to have uh, this two layer with a link with the visualization and, and the, the gateway. So here, when you click on this feature data set, you get here the different list. There's there is only one, but there is a longer list uh, with a different um, data set than we have uh, selected uh, as critical. We make like I want the there the was a long interview of different experts and so on to actually select the the white right data set. Uh, and there, when you when you click here on one particular data set, it actually show more info about about this data set, and you can uh, click there on the image. And there, in this case, it will go to the visualization tool. So if if you if you if you go back here, there is a tab with a critical data set. Here, all the list of them. You can select one. And after here, you click and you go um, uh, and you go to the to the visualization tool, uh, which looks like this. So here you, you have the different, uh, there there is only one that is still a mockup. Here you have the list of the different um, data sets and, um, and you can select and visualize the different data sets. And if you click there again, um, well, you go back here. So you go back to the gateway with all the information about the data sets. And that was part of, of our job that we did having these two layers. What we did also was um, to, uh, to check that these critical data sets were fair. So we, we checked on the 50 uh, selected data sets, then they were actually easy to be reused. And we checked, we reach out to data provider, we improve on existing metadata, we check for consistency. So being sure that the data set we select are high quality. And we also provide the common entry point for these different data sets. So, I mean, the visualization and also uh, here this list of future data sets. And we, we add to, to the node also some of the data sets which were not available online anymore. So that's also a part of the project with its one part is indeed to have the tools online, to have the numerical part of the tool online. But another part is also just to work with the different data provider to make them, to make their data set as fair as possible. So there is it did a part of software development, but there is also a part of, of community, let's say, development, where uh, we work with different actors to try to make the data as fair as possible. Okay, so that's such a very short overview of, of what um, of what NMAPS here, and I wanted to say um, then, then the advantage, finalement, of, of the gateway is that uh, we could use the strengths of the research graph of open air for our purposes. And, and we could, you know, through the gateway, we could really uh, use, let's say, the power of this research graph, but which um, to something which is useful and directly applicable for us um, in, in a larger system than we actually imagine before we actually talked about the gateway, but where we create this uh, layer there, we thought, okay, actually, this layer there, we already have it. We can reuse this gateway uh, and we use what uh, OpenAI already do for instead of actually, you know, we starting to zero, uh, and that was actually uh, quite quite useful for us to to try to create this um, this um, this larger uh, view uh, to of, of data management in, in energy research. So one challenge of the gateway is that you actually have to personalize it, so you have to find the right keyword uh, and the right project, so it's relevant for your community. But when you actually do that. You, that has the advantage of getting the, the interesting uh, paper and the interesting data sets uh, related to your community uh, rather quickly. So that's all. Thanks, uh, thanks a lot to listen to me, to you. Uh, I'm obviously available for, for all questions you have and, and all the discussion. Okay, many thanks, Diane, for your presentation. So now we can open uh the time for for questions from participants uh, let me share my screen to share the questions so we we already have one question from niam brennan i think this question is for alessia i'm looking for a way to improve the discoverability of open educational resources is it possible for open air to harvest these resources directly from a learning management system such as Moodle? 
Oh, so um, regarding the inclusion of content in open air, um, we provide guidelines for different types of repositories. And uh, um, so if with Moodle, which is a, honestly a platform that I don't know. So if Moodle is able to expose the metadata about these educational resources according to uh, a format compliant with the open air guidelines, there should be no problem for us to harvest. Uh, but this is something that you should check with the capabilities of Moodle itself. So this is a rather very technical question. Okay, thank you. I think we have another question in the chat. But right now I, I'm not able to see the chat. I can see it. Okay, um, if you can read it, please. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. from Asta Matur. Sorry if I pronounced the name in the wrong way. So um, does Open Air itself have any human creation steps to create the research graphs? Okay, yes, we have some uh, human creation activities uh, which can, can be performed also by, uh, by external people because via the gateway, the users have this link functionality and this can be used to add miss links or add missing products. And also specify when adding new products, they, people can also specify the access right that are to be associated to this, pro to this product. Uh, then internally in open air, yes, we, uh, we certainly do some creation, uh, not completely manual because uh, we are supported by tools. So for example, we have the validator service, which can be used to validate uh, the compliance of the content uh, with our guidelines. And then we have a, a suite of internal tools that checks uh, the quality of what we produce. Okay, thank you. If someone wants to uh, put uh, your, some question directly, you can open your microphone and ask directly Alessia or Diane. I think Irina uh, just sent some question here in the chat, Andre. Um, there was also this project of SET, open air model plugin for space geospatial sector. Uh, does anyone have more information about this? I don't know if someone can help. Yeah, no, personally, I cannot help on this, uh, but probably we can investigate offline and see. Uh, what we can get. And there is also a suggestion from Bruce Herbert, Neum. He says that um, we create our open educational resources author that attacks us a and them in our DSpace repository and the open air research graph could harvest that metadata. Yes, yes, indeed. Another question is about the coverage. So is the open air knowledge graph representing European research? Not only. So we started from, uh, from Europe, uh, but then we really broaden, uh, widen, so sorry, widen our, our scope. And uh, for example, we have uh, all Crossref, which is basically all publications with a, 99% of all publications uh, published with the DOI, and this is really worldwide. And as I was showing, showing one of my first uh, slides, we also have Cielo, and Cielo is one of the um, most important platform in, the, in South America, and we also have La Referencia. 
for example, and Jairo, which is a big aggregator uh, in Japan. So we can say that the coverage is pretty, it's pretty wide. And this is also benefit for um, for the research communities because in, the, in many cases what we see is that the communities are um, are geographically distributed let's say so having research out outcomes that are not focusing on a single um, region is very important for them because it it also gives uh, the the numbers and the, and the feelings of doing something that is uh, possibly reused um, also outside the original boundaries of the community itself. We have here another question from Serge. Are there any user statistics for the gateways? Uh, you mean for um, for the content about the content available in the gateways or the gateways um, themselves? Such so if you want, you can open your microphone and clarify the, your question in detail. Yeah, I'm I'm back. I was trying to find the microphone. Uh, no, it, it's about the usage. I mean, it's a service for people who want to use it. Okay, so, so you mean the, the statistics about the usage of the of, 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 of the service of, of the gateways? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yes, yes, uh, we keep uh, we keep some, some statistics currently only internally, uh, but these are of course available for the gateway managers. Uh, we are monitoring uh, the access to the gateways via the um, Matomo platform. So I think it's in the plan of Nexus also to make this, um, this information uh, available uh, to the public. So it's part of the project we are currently running. And we have also a question from Carlos. Uh, any access to Chinese data sources? Okay, I have to be honest, I don't remember. But what I can suggest is that you go on the Explore portal. You go on, there is a menu on the right, which says Content Provider. And you can click on Browse All. And one of the browse options is by country. So from there, you can see how many providers from China we have. Okay, and uh, another question, question from Richard. I notice uh, in um, Develop Portal uh, it will no longer support for exporting uh, OIPMH. There are quite a few repositories which use OIPMH, but um, build functionalities. This is very disappointing to see and re ready. Curious why this continue this this service. Okay, so um, it's not that OpenAir is not going to support uh, OAI PMH harvesting anymore. We will keep harvesting from repositories. What we will not do anymore is to expose the whole graph via OAI PMH because uh, basically the, the, it was not sustainable uh, to operate the service as it should be. So, um, because the graph is too big. So we went uh, for a solution that is also adopted by other research graph uh, initiative. So uh, Crossref or uh, the ENDS research graph, the PID graph from Freya. So what we are going to have is that we, ha we will offer the search API, but for bulk consumption, we are going to deliver um, dumps. So you will not be able anymore to consume the whole content in bulk uh, via the IP image. Okay, thank you, Alessia. 
I don't know if someone wants to, to raise some additional question or comment. There's a question here from him, Beam Long Duong. Uh, are only scientific publications included in open air? Ah, uh, no, not only scientific publications. In fact, one of the, uh, let's say, pillar of the concept of open science is that uh, of giving credit for all types of research products. So one type is the scientific publication, but we also have um, data, we also have research software uh, and other types of research products of very, very different types. In open air, um, we, we also have, uh, let's say, non-peer-reviewed materials. So we have the preprints, we have the presentations, we have the technical reports, deliverables of projects. Um, so we have very different types of research outputs and scientific publications are just a, a fraction of them. Okay. Any other questions? I don't know if uh, you, the end, if you want to, to raise some comment or final thoughts, you, you can also say something if you, if you want. No, nothing special from my side. Thanks a lot to everybody for the attention. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Diane. Paula, we don't have any, any questions no, 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 no. in the chat? Okay. That's all. If there are no more questions, I think we can close the webinar. Many thanks first to, to, the, to, the, to the speakers, Alessia and Diane for your participation, collaboration to, to share your thoughts, uh, your knowledge about the Open Air Connect and the NRMAPS Gateway. Thank you, thank you all the participants for accepting our invitation to, to come to, to this webinar. Uh, so just to conclude, um, both the presentations and, the, and the, the recording will be made available in the event page. We will also send by email to you. Uh, and stay tuned in the upcoming uh, in, uh, initiatives of Open Air. Um, we will have more webinars uh, targeting other Open Air services. So we will uh, continue to communicate uh, and we hope to you, you can join future future uh, webinars from open air thank you all uh, goodbye